and I stood up and said, you know, we've got a really serious problem with climate change. And somebody at the back of the audience asked me why I was so certain that there was a problem with climate change. And in fact, told me that I should be locked up for lying to the world. The United Nations has warned that time Human is activities are responsible for the climate change. Human activities are responsible for the climate change. Pursuing progress is in our DNA. Maximum energy, minimum emissions. Uh, it's very, very nice to be here. Uh, I see some friendly faces. That's always a good thing. Um, Sam has asked me to look after today and host. And I have to tell you that that was quite a daunting idea. I'm used to sitting here and uh, apparently looking reasonably intelligent answering questions, but to stand up here and be the one asking the questions, that's going to be an interesting experience for all of us, I hope. <laughs> I would also say that I'm feeling a little bit old and a little bit tired, and I just want to share that with you because I did my first conference on sustainability in 2007 and I was heckled from the audience. It was in the United States, and I was representing DHL. And I stood up and said, you know, we've got a really serious problem with climate change. And somebody at the back of the audience asked me why I was so certain that there was a problem with climate change. And in fact, told me that I should be locked up for lying to the world. I'm really pleased that we seem to have moved on a little bit since then. Uh, everybody seems to recognize that the world is changing and that things are happening that we are not totally in control of. I really hope that we can convey some of that information today with some of the excellent people that we've got coming along so that we can share with you some of the ideas and some of the experiences that we've had along the journey. I was very, very pleased to see this week that Sheikh Mohammed attended a meeting where every single emirate signed up to the net zero commitment by 2050. But I was especially pleased that they all committed to a measurement and monitoring process. And the reason for that is that net zero is a mathematical concept. Net is a mathematical term, and zero, depending on your view of history, zero is a number, or it's not a number, but it's a mathematical concept anyway. So when I go and visit large corporates, and I say to them, how are you getting ready for net zero? And they say, well, we've got this happy smiley face thing. And if the project's going well, we have a green smiley face. And if it's going badly, we have a red grumpy face. And I asked them, what's the numerical value of the green or the red? I know that they haven't even started thinking correctly about this yet. They haven't actually got as far as assessing and measuring their carbon footprint. And this is going to be a journey for all of us together. It's going to be hard. I remember being asked in 2009 by the head of Deutsche Post DHL, Carl, how many people do you think we need in our company to work on sustainability? At that time, the organization had 520,000 employees. And I asked, how many of those employees are accountants who are counting money? And he guessed, about 20,000. I had a team of 13 people doing sustainability. So I boldly suggested we might need at least 20,000 people doing sustainability because they would at least save some money. They would at least be saving carbon footprint, making a difference to EBITDA and moving the business forwards. Now that numeric approach is something that we've seen now running through a lot of the companies that have taken the science-based target initiative, the international numeric way of measuring carbon footprint. But today, 
I really want to explore this in a bit more depth. I've, this year already, I've sat through seven sustainability conferences, some of them as a speaker, and honestly, I've been bored senseless by most of it. The level of polish of greenwash is achieving new levels. Companies are coming out with spokespeople, heads of sustainability, and PowerPoint presentations that are superb and entirely lacking any detail or any real commitment or any real concept of how serious this is. The policy needs to be driven from the sea level. It needs to be driven by the CEO. The ownership needs to be at the board. This challenge will affect everyone in the organization and it will affect every business in the world. We need to address it and we need to get on with it now. Thank you very much for listening to me initially and I hope that we'll have some fun later on today, so thank you.